I want you to open up your Bibles to Genesis. Open up your Bibles to Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 11 as we start this recalculating series. And, and let me just throw out at you guys. How many this summer y'all went on a road trip somewhere? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, hands up everywhere. Some of you all decided you'd go experience a beach you've never been before, you know? Some of you decided you were going to go to some mountain getaway that you had never gone before. Or others of you, man, you woke up in the morning, you knew you were headed to some big city. I've never been to, you fill in the blank. I don't know. Charlotte's not a big city. I'll just say Charlotte. So you put Charlotte in your GPS, and you mash go, and it recalib you know calculates everything and next thing you know you are on your way to charlotte to experience all that the city has and, but if you're like me on my way to some of these destinations this summer i don't pay attention even the gps i'm not paying attention to and next thing you know, I'm not paying attention, and I get off, you know. Maybe there was a detour, and I missed the detour. There was a roadblock. I don't know about y'all. I think COVID, like, as we got through it, every, I don't know, if maybe roads get COVID because there's road construction freaking everywhere, right? Like, everywhere we went. Last week, I drove 53 hours, literally, with the different things I had last week. It was a crazy week, and all I saw was orange cones everywhere and detours and roadblocks and and so if we're not paying attention, we'll miss those things. It just happens if we're not paying attention. Not only have we all been there before while driving, that we missed our GPS turn and it had to start recalculating, but truth of the matter is we've all been there for a while, we've been there before while living as well. Many of you, you started off 2022. This is going to be the year that, and you fill in the blank. This, this is the year. You had in your eyes an, an idea of a destination. This is going to be the year that my marriage gets stronger. This is going to be the year that my health gets better. This is going to be the year my finances get where they need to be. This is going to be the year that my business excels. This is going to be the year that my spiritual growth takes a giant step forward. And there is something to the words destination and destiny that I don't think it's an accident. They're similar. Amen? Because God has a destiny for you. He has a plan for various areas of your life. And a lot of times we begin the year with our eyes set on that plan. But there's a detour. There's a roadblock. There's a lack of paying attention or something. And now here we are. It's August. We're well past the halfway part of 2022. And if you're like me, I'm going, I'm not headed where I want to be. God, help me to recalculate so that I can get where you have called me to be this year. Amen? And so I want to look at that today. Because some of you, those setbacks weren't your fault. For some of you, those setbacks were because of sickness. For some of you, those setbacks were unforeseen financial hardships, things that you didn't plan. Something happened that you literally had no control of. You were headed in the right direction. Ross, I was going toward what God showed me to go toward. And it was like, bam, whole stop. Something got in the way. And, and I'm having to recalibrate. I'm having to renavigate. It just, it's not a straight path, Ross. I hit a roadblock. For others of you, you had plans, all right? But you, everybody just point to yourself. I'm just, I'm going to step on your toes. God show you where to go, but you made choices, right? Decisions. You, you lost attention to the GPS. You, you, it was your fault, and now you find yourself at a dead end, or you find yourself off course, off track from the destination that you intended to walk in. Either way, you're still trying, whether you did it on purpose or on accident or, or somebody did it to you, you're trying to struggle to find a way back to get on track. You know what's so neat about modern GPS programming? It does it for you, right? I can't tell you how many times in the past, before modern GPS, Amy and I have been married 28 years, over 28 years. So this means that we had to trust Rand McNally at one point in our life. How many knows what Rand McNally is? Yeah, that's my old folks, including myself. And I would tell Amy, no, no, we're not lost. And she's like, we're lost. No, no, we're not. 
we'll figure this out. But it was a lot of work. You had to sit down, get the map, all that kind of stuff. Man, when I first moved to Georgia, still no GPS. And so I moved down here. I'm cleaning carpets as the church is starting to grow, and that was my, my job. I had a book this big of Atlanta streets, A1127. And you're, you look through it, and, and, and guys, when you have ADHD, it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't. I'm looking at this and like, oh, there's so many numbers and streets. I would get into neighbors. Do you know how many peace tree streets there are in Georgia? <laughs> and it didn't matter. I could get into a neighborhood at four in the afternoon to do my final carpet or five to do my final carpet. And it could be Victory Commons neighborhood. And I could pull in there using my map. And next thing you know, it's like, oh gosh, Victory Street, Victory Alley, Victory Lane, Victory Commons, Victory, Victor, Victory. I have no victory getting out of here. And I'd get home late, and Amy's like, where were you? I'm like, I lost. I, I was lost in the neighborhood. <laughs> True. I would get lost. So much easier now. You miss it a little bit, and it starts to recalculate, and it starts to set you back on path. I love that, because we've all been there before, where we got off our original route, and then we get that notification that says, recalculating. There's hope. Shout, there's hope. There's hope. Yeah, there's hope. I, I know where I want to go. I'm not there. I'm not even close. But this thing just said, recalculating, we're going to get there. Amen? And so if there's one thing that you leave with today, we're going to get into the word of God here in a second. If there's one thing that you leave as you're on your way to your destination and you feel at times, whether it was your fault or somebody else's, whether it's a detour or a roadblock, whether you just weren't paying attention, but you're lost. Let me say, because GPS today has taught us this, you're not lost if you're still driving. Men, I want you to own that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, because Amy will say, Ross, we're lost. I'm no, we're not lost, baby. How do you know? Because I'm still driving. Yeah, that thing's going to recalculate. I'm not lost. I'm only lost if I stop, if I quit. But we're going to get there, baby, you know? And so let's stand to our feet. That word recalculating, it means the process of calculating again, typically using different information or different data. And so you're on your journey toward the destination God showed you. You hit something, and in the middle of hitting it, you have to adapt. You have to look at that situation and say, okay, Lord, what's next? But I'm not going to stop moving forward with you, Jesus. And so we see in this passage in Genesis 11, God had spoken to a man by the name of Terah, who is Abram's father. And he lived in an area called Ur of the Chaldeans, which is in the Mesopotamian, the fertile crescent of Mesopotamia, where the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates are. And Ur of the Chaldeans is between those rivers in modern day what would be Iraq. And God speaks to Terah, and that's where we pick up this story. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. God told Terah to leave Ur of the Chaldeans and to go to Canaan. That's the destination. Shout Canaan. Canaan. We know Canaan is the land of promise. We know Canaan, and years later, is the land that they occupied to walk into that land flowing with shout milk. Shout, honey. honey. Yeah, that's that land of, pro, of, of, of provision, that land of supply, that land of blessing. And so God is leading them there. They, they, we know this is a call upon Terah's life, but watch what happens. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us over the next few minutes to get a hold of this word so that we can get a hold of the destiny, the future, all that you have for us, and not miss one thing you want to place in our lives and in the lives of others through us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go ahead and have your seats. They got there, and they began to settle in Haran. Haran is like an oasis on the edge of Mesopotamian desert, right before you get over and move into Canaan. And it's this oasis, and they just settled there as a family. That's not what God had told Terah to do, but that's where he began to settle. And then they begin, I believe, to kind of get lost, at least as far as the, the, the vision God had for them. They started to miss it. And if we're not careful, we can get lost on the journey as well. 
A man by the name of Mike Iaconelli, he wrote the book, The Wittenberg Door, and he said that he lived in a small rural community where there was lots of cattle ranches, lots of cows, and he said ever so often a cow would wander off and you'd see it way off the farm, way off where it was supposed to be. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, he asked the rancher, he said, how is it that these cows get lost? Y'all have fences, what, what happens? And the rancher said, well, the cow starts nibbling on a tuft of green grass, and when it finishes, it looks ahead to the next tuft of green grass, and then starts nibbling on that one. And then it nibbles on a tuft of grass right next to a hole in the fence, and then it sees another tuft of green grass on the other side of the fence, so it nibbles on that one, and then it goes on to the next tuft. The next thing you know, the cow has nibbled itself into being lost. Well, pastor, what in the world does that mean to me and my destiny? Well, let me just say it this way. Americans, we are so often in the process of nibbling our way into lostness. We keep moving from one tough of activity to another, never noticing how far we've gone from home or how far away we are from the goals God had us pursuing or the truths that we're supposed to hold on to. And we have managed to end up outside of God's best. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just say it this way? Thank God we're not stupid cows. We don't have to go through life nibbling our way to lostness. No, no, no. We don't have to settle for lesser things when God has shown us a destination or a destiny that he wants us to pursue. My dad as a kid, man, he would really push on me about my destiny, about my future. He would say, Ross Allen, he'd say, you are the righteousness of God. You are the seed of Abraham. He'd get old school Pentecostal. You are head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Shout somebody. But he would. He'd pour that into me. And here's what he would say. He said, because of that, you have the consciousness of God in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. And when the Holy Spirit is leading and directing you, you don't have to follow your base nature. You can follow the leading of the Holy Spirit into all that God has for you. And so he said it this way. He goes, you are not a dog. I'm like 14, 15. You're not a dog. You don't have to rise and follow and be led by your base nature, that animalistic, if you will, nature. No, no, no. You're a spirit-filled son of God, and you need to follow what God has for you and go where God has you going and remind yourself. I can't tell you how many times I'd be at a party, hanging out with a bunch of people, looking around going, there's a bunch of freaking animals. Just as, I mean, just as a kid, just like, like, because I realized, and I was part of it, but those words would get back to me, you know, just back. You're starting to get off. You're getting a detour. You're like that cow nibbling its way to lostness. But you are not an animal. Everybody look to your neighbor and say, you ain't a stupid cow. <laughs> look to the other neighbor. You want to say it again. You ain't a stupid cow. That's fun. No, you're not. You don't have to nibble your way to lostness. God's given you a purpose and a destination, and you can wake up decisive and move toward it. But I do know, even when you're decisive, there's times that we get off, don't we? My best intentions, at times I miss the mark. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying it's real. I think Paul even said it. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Who's going to deliver me from this body of flesh, he says. But he doesn't excuse it. Shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, he said. Why? Because then he goes off all into Romans 8, telling you who you are. You're more than a conqueror through Christ who saved you. Telling you who you are. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, at times we get off, but God would tell you today, recalculate. Don't, don't allow that to cause you to stop. And so God has given us the means through his Holy Spirit to recalculate and head in the right direction. And you can have confidence of that. I'm going to say it this way. You're not lost if you're still driving, okay? You're just not there yet. You need to hear that. You know what? Because this year you were planning it was going to be different. I was going to read the whole Bible. Ross, I started in Matthew. I'm in Luke. Okay, you're just not there yet. I'd rather you live a little or read a little and live a lot than read a lot 
and live it a little. Amen? But if God told you to read the whole thing, man, dig back in. All right, here we go again. You know, let's, let's study that word. <laughs> All I'm saying is you're not lost if you're still driving. You're just not there yet. Watch this, Genesis 12, 1 through 2. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I'll make your name great so that you will be a blessing. What we see here is the old man had left Ur of the Chaldeans with his family, had settled in Terah, and now, or Haran rather, and now God is speaking to Abram, saying, all right, it's time to leave the old man. It's time to leave the family. It's time to leave where you have settled And it's time for you to go into Canaan. It's time for you to pursue what? To pursue the inheritance I have for you. It goes on. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I want to bless you and bless people through you. But the old man settled in Terah. You know what the Lord gave me in the first service that wasn't in the notes? That's the fight we have. We have a fight within us The old man within us, our old nature, says, this is good enough. Look, I'm comfortable here. I left one spot. I'm not in sin no more. I've come to faith. I'm moved. I'm not down there in Ur of the Chaldeans anymore. Look, I've moved up here, the northern part of Mesopotamia. I am now up here in in Haran, but I'm good. I'm comfortable. That's that old base nature of us, that old man. But there's a young man rising up in this house prophetically. Listen to me. There are young men in this house, young women. When I say young, I mean in spirit, like Abram that's rising up. And God's saying, now is the time to go after the promise that I've given to you. Don't be satisfied with the old man saying, this is enough. Don't be satisfied with the voices around the old man that'll say, you know, you're just getting too serious about that Christian stuff. You know, you're just getting too serious. You run your business different because you're a spirit-filled person. And that old other business partner of you is saying, oh, you're just getting too serious about that. No, 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 that's the old man trying to keep you in Haran. When God has a greater destiny for you, a greater destination. Don't get detoured by that. Don't get a roadblock by that. Amen? Because the promised destination for you is still on the horizon and getting there isn't just possible, it is probable if you'll just take some time to recalibrate. If you'll just take some time to do what it takes to go, okay, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not staying. Amen? How many in this room right now, there's some things God placed in your heart that you're pursuing? Raise your hand. Come on. Come on, I'm serious. I want you to raise your hand because I, I want to be able to look at this as a way where, where, where I, I'm praying that today, like a prophetic unction will get on you, you know? The anointing of the Holy Spirit will get on you. Not that it'll just be you pursuing what God has for you, but that it'll be, I'm, I'm sorry, just, yeah, just you on your own. But you'll feel the partnership of the Holy Spirit as you pursue what God has on you. And it's not, it's because it's not just about you being blessed. It's about the nations being blessed through you. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, 8. So this stirring begins to take place. We've looked at Genesis, but we're going to fast forward to Hebrews. And Hebrews 11 is called the Hall of Faith. And you're going to see all these different people from the Old to the New Testament that have responded in faith to God. And some of those things, people, man, they went through some stuff seeing God's victory come. But it says that they had responded in faith. And it comes down and it begins to speak of Abram And I believe we can learn a few things about this journey as we look at it. Verse 11, no, verse 8, chapter 11. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. God's challenging him to leave where he was comfortable, to leave where the detour took him, because God didn't plan for him just to hang out in Haran. But there's settlement there. He's allowed to become very comfortable. Tehran, and they had built this place of refuge there, this oasis. And God's calling him now, but, but, but God, if I go, I'll have to live in tents. 
If God, if I go, we'll leave everything that we've established. I like this. This is comfortable. But God's calling him to leave his kindred. In other words, there's relationships that might be different when you begin to pursue the destination God has you on. God's calling him to leave and to go live in tents. There are things that you lean into that you feel is your shelter that God is calling you out of when he's leading you into a destination. I find my refuge in this, Ross. You don't understand. I find my refuge. I was with a man last week in Long Island, and the poor man is so mentally anguished. He literally had a plastic water bottle this big, full of vodka and water. And he's telling me, he's a Jewish Christian man, and he's telling me, he's like, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't be able to make it. I don't know if I would take my own life. I don't know what I would do. That's his comfort. That's his refuge. And in the moment, I, 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 could, I, I get it. It works. But I know that's not the destination God has for him. I know that's not the end, the destiny. Amen? So we were able to enjoy just talking and challenging him to be able to get help and things of that nature. So that might be that place of Haran. I find my refuge in this substance. I find my refuge in these finances. I find my refuge in this relationship. I find my refuge in this, whatever it might be, this occupation, as God may be leading you to something else. But we can see here, God is beginning to move them. And so <clears throat> with that, as you go into a new destination, or as you're heading towards something, there are two important things that you need to know to get to where you're going, if you're going to try to get somewhere. And you already know this. The first one is this. You got to know where you are right? So, so you grab your phone, and nowadays it's easy because you go to the map pro program, and you hit location, and you hit that little arrow, and it GPS geolocates you right where you are. You are here. Amen? So it makes it easy to know where you are. In the Hebrews 11.8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. In that moment, he had to look at this Everything around him. This is good. This isn't Canaan. I have to know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. I'm in Haran. This is good, but it's not milk and honey. This is good, but it's not the promise. This is good, but I need to go where God says it's going again. In other words, he had to get honest with himself in this moment. I don't know about Abram, but as a kid growing up and then starting to come away from my father's leadership, I can remember how scary that was. This is good. I enjoy the covering I have here, but now I'm stepping out on my own. And there was times in the early ministry where I would call my dad, Daddy, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he'd be like, you need to pray. Pop, just tell me. I'd call him Pop. Pop, just tell me. You need, you need a voice. You need a word from the Lord. Shut up, Pop. <laughs> just tell me what I'm supposed to do. But he, he didn't want me to lean back into those relations. He wanted me to lean forward into the voice of God. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and so I could just see Abram just looking around and saying, this is, i got to take an honest assessment. This is good, but this isn't where God's called us. God told us a generation ago that we were supposed to go to Canaan, and here we are. So I want to challenge you when it comes to you feeling lost in life, that first thing is, where are you? An honest assessment. Where are you right now? Now, and you may feel like you're three steps into a maze with blocks everywhere. And how in the world am I going to get out of this? And that's okay, as long as you know where you are in the moment. I know where I'm at, and I know I don't know where I'm at. I know where I'm at, and I know I need the Lord in this moment. I know where I'm at, but I'm going to keep my feet moving. Okay? You got to get to that point. And men, we have a hard time with this. We got to get to that point where we can go, Okay, I'm lost. How many guys in this room? Amy, all the time, years ago, would just be like, will you please just pull over and get some directions? You know? I'm not lost, baby. I'm still driving. <laughs> not lost. But, 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 but us men have a struggle with that. That's why the angel only had to tell Mary once, but Joseph three times. That's <laughs> how men are. You know, it's just the truth. When it comes to the feeling like you're in a maze as you're on a journey, it's rare to escape a maze on the first attempt. It just is. 
When we get stuck in a maze, we can't escape by following the same path that got us lost. We escape a maze by trying new routes, by realizing this isn't working. It's time to turn. It's time to find a different direction. You face a dead end, but you don't stop. Literally, every dead end and cul-de-sac helps you to escape the maze. Amen? So if you're feeling like that right now, lost in that destination, like I know where I'm going, but I can't, I just keep hitting stuff. Sometimes it takes the wrong turns to make the right decisions. It just does. And I love that. I love it because God works with our humanity. Amen? He he says, for those who are called according to his purpose. In other words, I'm not excusing my decision-making process separate from the leading of the Holy Spirit, but I do realize as I'm moving forward and I'm leaning into the call of God, I'm leaning into my purpose with him, I do realize at times I'm going to face hardships. Whether I bring them or others bring them, I'm going to face roadblocks or detours. And then what the scripture says before that is that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So this maze, this destination that keeps getting all these roadblocks, it's okay. Because sometimes when I look back, I look at all those things where I hit walls, and I'm like, God, thank you for every wall. Thank you for every struggle. Thank you for all those those orange stinking pylons and road construction in my life. Because I could see how God even used those things that the enemy meant for evil. I could see how God turned them for good to walk into the destiny that he had for me. Amen? And I believe it's the same for you. So GPS in the natural now makes it easy when you get lost. You know? Like I said, you just look at it again. As soon as you get lost, it recalibrates. And all of a sudden, it gives you an alternative way either to get back on track or a new route to get on the way. It's amazing. When I was growing up and you got lost, you had to pull that map out. You had to figure out where you got off. And sometimes, man, it was a little while before you figured out you were lost, right? You drove 45 minutes and realized, oh, I can't get there from here. Frustrating. In travel, the knowledge how far off you've gotten, literally, as you look at that map, oh, it could be disheartening. I've gotten, I've gotten so far off. Ross, I've gotten so far off in my marriage. Ross, I've gotten so far off in my addiction. Ross, I've gotten so far off in my finances. I don't, I don't see a way back. Ross, I've gotten so far off, and I've fed myself doubt so much that I believe the lies that maybe God doesn't exist and maybe God doesn't care. And maybe God doesn't have a plan. Ross, I'm just lost. I've nibbled my way to lostness. And I'm looking at the map and I'm giving an honest assessment and I don't know how to go forward from here. I'm looking at this and I'm so far off. Physically, it can be disheartening, right? But in life, when you feel that way, it can be unbearable. Life, when it feels that way, you, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to sit down and Torah. I'm just staying here. I know this. I'm just going to stay here in Torah. I don't want to pursue anything else, God. I don't want to go forward, God. I just, I'm just going to stay right here. This, I, I know this. I'm safe here. But the blessing, the inheritance is way over there. Not for just you, but for those who will be blessed in and through you. It's way over there. I just feel so lost right now. It's easy just to go back and just sit where I'm comfortable. How in the world am I supposed to get there in light of where I am right now? That's a good question. But what's more important, there's a few things here. What's more important than just knowing where you're coming from, you got to have that honest assessment of where you are right now. So where you're coming from, knowing where you are. What's more important to moving forward is knowing where you want to end up. Reminding yourself of that. I mean, like literally, no one wants to get lost and stay in the panhandle of Florida when they're on their way to the beach in Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants as you're going and you realize, oh, we're lost. Well, hey, kids, guess what? We're camping at Farmer Joe's. Set up the camp. Daddy, Mommy, the beach is like, like I know it's, I, it has to be that way. <laughs> nope, we're just going to stay here. 
No, no, you got to put in a new destination or put in the destination again. Let the thing recalibrate and continue heading toward the beach. Continue, t- continue heading to what God has for you. Don't, don't settle. So no, you let the GPS recalibrate or recalculate and you head out again for your original destination. So number one, as we looked, you got to know where you are. This is my location. Honest evaluation of where you are right now. Number two, know where you want to end up. Be clear on that destination. The Bible would say, write it. Write it clear so that you may run with it. Be clear on that destination. And so watch this. In Hebrews 11.10, Abraham, it says, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. This is what caused him to leave Terah, because he's going to go to a city, an area, where God's going to design where the destiny of the Lord is going to produce, where God's going to build. Amen? And it's the same way with you. God is your designer for your life. God is the builder of your life. Amen? And he's got an inheritance for you. It's not in Terah. It's not in Ur of the Chaldees. It is in Canaan. It's in the place that he says, continue to pursue me. And I will lead you into that. Amen? So over the next month, the next few weeks, we're going to look at various ways that you can recalculate and line yourself up with the plans and the purposes God has for you. Today, I'm really just trying to help stir you in faith to not settle. When Terah took his family and left Ur of the Chaldees, he was headed to the promised land. He was headed to what God had called them to. It says this, though, but when they came to Haran, they settled there. You know what it looks like to settle? If this comes out of your mouth, you're settling. It's just who I am. It's who I've always been. It's just how my family is. It's just how we do business. It's just how we spend money. It's just how we... Come on, somebody. Well, you know what? That old man died in Terah. Come on. That new man gets to go to Canaan. I don't want to go. That's just how our family's always been. This is how we've always been. This is the decisions. I remember years ago counseling a man, and he was always rude to his wife, just like, like too curt, okay? And he goes, Ross, I'm just being real. I'm just keeping it real. And I was like, dude, you keep it up. You're going to keep it real divorced. That's <laughs> your wife. Talk right to her, right? But that's just how, it's, that's how it's always been. Just settling. No, no, no. Don't settle. Don't, don't, settling can sound like this. You know what? Maybe next year. You know, maybe next, next, next year I'll try. Maybe next year I'll grow. Maybe next year I'll start. Maybe next year. What are you doing right now? Make that destination clear and allow God to recalibrate things to move you or recalculate things to move you toward or closer toward that inheritance that he has for you. Don't settle. Remind yourself, you're not lost if you're still driving. You're just not there yet. Don't settle in Haran when God has promised you Canaan. You need to hear that. Don't settle in Haran. Yes, there's water. Yes, there's some trees. Yes, it's an oasis. But there is milk and honey in Canaan that God has for you. There's provisions in Canaan that God has for you. Don't settle by stopping. Amen? Keep driving. That's my last part. Know where you're going or know where you've come, where you are, know where you're going, and keep driving. Hebrews 11, 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out. Now, a little caveat, and he went out not knowing where he was going. But it didn't matter. He was responding to the voice of the one who was calling him, and he knew the one who was calling him knew exactly where this was. The one who had promised him the inheritance for him and those through him knew God will get me there. I just need to keep driving. I keep moving. And that's the importance of faith in our lives. Not presumption, but faith. God, I'm putting my trust in you that you've told me to move in this direction. I'm hitting roadblocks and detours, but I'm not settling. I'm continuing to move forward. Even if it feels hopeless at times, there is no such thing as a hopeless situation. Every single circumstance of your life can change if you keep heading towards what God has promised you. And you may at times make the wrong turn. You may at times lose sight of your destination. 
At times, you may feel confused on how you've gotten where you are, and you're frustrated with how far it seems that you're going to have to go to get to where you want to be, but continue to keep driving. Shout, keep driving. driving. Yeah, yeah. During that season, don't settle. Don't rely on just yourself alone to get back on course. No, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to that place of inheritance. He was obeying the one who called him. I'm not just saying some pipe dream. I'm not just saying that you had pizza one night and woke up in the morning and I want this for my life. I want this for my family. No, no. I'm saying getting a relationship close to Jesus, that when you have that relationship, you start to hear from the voice of God what your Canaan is. And I'm not just saying spiritual stuff because your Canaan could be that you're going to be the best real estate agent in all of Atlanta. Amen? We already got a bunch of the best ones here in this, in this church. Your, 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 your Canaan might be that you're going to be a, an author of something that God has placed in your heart to write for his glory. Your Canaan might be that you're going to be a, an amazing stay-at-home mom that pours into those kids and they grow up to call you blessed. They grow up to serve the Lord. I don't know what that Canaan is, amen? But it's worth the pursuit. It's worth to keep driving. It's worth to keep our eyes on what God, the one who is calling us to move out, it's worth keeping our eyes on him. I'm going to close with this. At the heart of London, there's something that's called the Charing Cross. What it is, it's six different roads that intersect into the central part of London. And many people in London just call it the cross, the cross. And there was a little boy one day, he gets lost, completely lost. And then getting lost, he's all distraught. He finds a bobby, he finds a policeman, and he's crying to the policeman, I can't find my way home. And the policeman's asking him all sorts of questions, trying to figure out how do I get this kid home. The more questions, the more tears. Finally, the kid, in all of his desperation and through his tears, he's just crying so hard. And he says this. He says, if you'll take me to the cross, sir, I think I can find my way home from there. Just take me to the cross. I can find my way home from there. Ross, is that the answer to everything? Yeah. In the middle of pursuing your destination, keeping your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen fixing your eyes on him. And the cross tells us something about the journey. The cross tells us something about the, de- about, about, about the destination. What a great description of a Christian life we see in this little story. The cross is both the starting place of our new life in Christ, but it's also the place that we return time and time again so that we can keep our bearings in life. Hebrews 12, 2, and I'll finish. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. By faith, Abraham left to pursue what God had told him. Now we see Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. It's not just our whim. It's our relationship with him, and he speaks destination, and we pursue it, and then he continues to lead as we'll look over the next few weeks and recalculate things in our life so that we can walk into what he has. The author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. And sat down at the right hand of God. Oh, don't miss this. Even Jesus' journey to the right hand of the Father looked like a gigantic detour. Jesus is on the cross. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is Savior, but on that cross, he's 100% humanity. Can you hear the cry of the human of Jesus, if you will? The humanity of Jesus. Why have you forsaken me? I thought there was a destination. I thought, well, you've forsaken me. He says it is finished. And guess what? What a testimony of the way this works. The enemy thought this was it. It's finished. Satan's like, it's finished. It's finished. It's finished. I got an ice cream and you don't have one. It's finished. No. In that moment, it is finished. Ooh, three days later, he rose from inheritance for him, inheritance for you. See how it works? Even in that moment, it looked like the destination was over, the detour, the roadblock. No, no. Jesus is challenging us today. Look to his cross as a testament that the destination will come if you just keep driving. And I'll just finish with this and we'll pray. You are not lost if you're still driving. 
you're just not there yet. Amen? How many, you're just not there yet? Raise your hand. Amen. Keep your hands up. I see those hands. You can put them down now. Maybe somebody's here and you haven't looked to the cross. In other words, you haven't begun a relationship with Jesus. Today you're like, man, I want to begin a relationship with this one that, that literally can relate to me. I mean, he's sitting in authority now, but he was on a cross then. This one can relate to me. He's sitting in power now and inheritance now, but he was on a cross. He was dead for three days. This one can relate to me. And then the same Christ, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that same spirit the Bible promises will come and live in you and will quicken you. The way you receive that is by receiving Jesus. And so if you're here this morning and you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, I want you to just raise your hand. Is there anybody here? I want to begin a relationship with Jesus today. Looking for hands, I'm looking for hands. If I miss you, catch one of us after service. All right, everybody with your hands up that had something that we're going to pray with you for, just raise your hand. I'm not there yet. Raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that even though they're not there yet, today they're making an honest evaluation of where they are. They're getting their eyes set on the destination that you have for them, and they're committing by faith to keep driving to keep moving forward, not under their own unction and power, but through the power and leading of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.